Mandla is going to be talking about NFT solutions under the African sun and for the African sun as well. And I'm going to get his name right as well. Watch this. Please put your heads together for Mr. Mandla Magakula. <laughs> right over the mat. <laughs> Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. How are you all doing? Great, great, great. All right, I don't have a lot of time. Um, this is a sponsored talk. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so I have about 20 minutes, and I've tried to do this talk for 20 minutes. All right, my name is Man Damakagula. I'm the CTO at a company called Libex. Um, what we do, we build marketplaces for the African sun. All right, great, that's better. Okay, awesome. Um, can you put up my presentation here? I don't know what happened. Okay, there you go, yes. Um, I'm battling here. I'm, I feel like I can, I can, I'm talking and I can hear other people talking at, as well. So I'll just continue. So my, I've titled my talk, Building Solutions Under the African Sun. So my talk is quite long, so I will start with the, the important stuff first. I have a few announcements to make. Um, uh, the few announcements that I want to make, the first one is we have a booth as Libex, the Libex Marketplace. It's right in there, it's the biggest booth, I think, um, if you go in the foyer. And um, the first thing, uh, we Africans, we like free things. You get a free NFT <laughs> when you... When you sign up, right, um, then you can resell that later. So go and sign up at the booth. And then secondly, which is a big one, uh, okay, if I can, okay. There's also 10,000 Rand worth of NFTs up for grabs. If you buy an NFT there uh, at our booth with a card, right? So we've simplified the process. So you can use your card, you can use cash, and own an NFT. So this is, if you've never owned an NFT, this is your opportunity to own one. And then, then we have an auction of our, our Cruiserweight champion, uh, Kevin Lorena. And he's put in some collector's items there on our NFT marketplace that you can auction for. And take this opportunity because I don't think you're gonna get it again. So this is your chance to own an NFT today. All right. Now, there's a few words that I use here. Some of them are acronyms, and I use them in interchangeably, right? But just so that there's consensus on what these words mean, let's uh, have a look at the words. The first one is, I'm battling with, with this thing. Okay. Yeah, NFT. What NFT is, um, and I, you may have a different definition of NFT, but the definition that I want to settle on is we're looking at a cryptographic asset, a cryptographic asset on the blockchain, that's number two, not in your database, not in your, I don't know, under your mattress, but it's a cryptographic asset on the blockchain with unique identification code and metadata. Right? It's not just the JPEG and metadata that sets it apart from each other. So if it doesn't have these attributes, I want to be a gatekeeper here and say it's not an NFT, it's something else. And then the second, the second um, terminology that I'm going to use is... I'm, I'm struggling here. Oh, crypto art. Again, I use these words interchangeably, crypto art, NFT, but crypto art is an umbrella term which represents a fusion of art and blockchain technology. So ultimately what crypto art seeks to, um, to, to achieve is basically to preserve immutable versions of digital art, such as painting, music, albums, awards, and other memorabilia. And for this, for the purpose of this talk, sometimes I'll refer to crypto art and sometimes I'll refer to it as NFT, but actually they mean the same, right? Financial inclusion, it's not a crypto term, 
right? But it's important to me. What financial inclusion is, it's the act. I say it's the act of ensuring individuals and businesses have access to useful and affordable financial products and services that meet their needs. That is transactions, payments, savings, credit, insurance, delivered in a responsible and sustainable way. Sus sustainable way, that is. I'm Zulu, so I can get away with this. Financial inclusion is not a, it's not a noun in my vocabulary. It's a verb. It's an act. It's a thing you do. Which is, it's the crux of my, of my talk today. When we build these crypto products, how do we include, how do we optimize for financial inclusion? But first, we need to identify the problems that you have in Africa, the problems that you have under the African sun, and how we, as Libex, solve those problems, or aim to solve those problems. Okay, I need to go to the next slide. I'm battling here. Okay, the biggest challenge, this is the most useless slide, it's electricity, right? We know this, this is a problem everywhere. Electricity is a big challenge. I mean, if you look at what... Uh, uh, Eskom a push put out. I'm battling with this. Um, this is a picture that Eskom a push put up the other days. So this year alone, if you look at how many, how much load shedding we've had, we have about almost 68 days of no electricity. That's almost half the year, right? And and the thing is, you and I can have solutions, right? You can get a solar. You can do all these things, but someone in the township, someone that cannot afford to pay the two billion that they want for a solar installation, they basically have to sit through this, right? Electricity is a big challenge. But then it's up to us as solution builders, how do you build your solutions such that it's optimized for this, that it can deal with load shedding, right? Someone can still enjoy your application even if they're not connected to the internet. We'll talk about more solutions here. The other challenge is internet access, right? There's a picture here, which is in my next slide, where you, it shows about the network coverage, how it's... So I'm battling to, to move this. So, okay, this is the picture, which shows you... I mean, it's very obvious. In terms of network connectivity, it's all concentrated in urban areas, in big cities. Like for me, who my family is outside of the big city, I get hit with this right after I drive five kilometers out of Pretoria. Then I get to experience this. All of a sudden, I cannot connect to anyone. I cannot, I cannot chat with anyone. I, can, I can't connect to anything. Everything is dead. Which basically, it's, it's a challenge. And this is true for all developing nations, not just South Africa. And the other thing is data prices, right? This is a big thing. And for you, you have fiber, nah, nah. but someone in the township, someone that's out there uh, that potentially doesn't have the resources that we have, data prices are a thing. But let me show you a picture of how bad the situation is for people here in Africa in terms of data prices. Um, it's in the next slide. This is a comparison. This is a chart that shows a comparison of data prices in different countries, and look at South Africa. It's second in terms of um, the price of one gig of data, uh, of mobile data, in South Africa, it's about 78 rand. Everywhere else, look at India. They buy a gig of data for three rand. Then you can imagine in terms of innovation, in terms of connectivity, in, in terms of all these challenges, how is South Africa even support, supposed to enjoy um, these innovative products, if we build them and they're data hungry and they're data heavy, right? This is some of the challenges that we have in Africa, and this is true for other African countries as well. Next slide. Yeah. So this is um, just, okay. In terms of smart device penetration, we have this stat that says in 2002, we have about 25 million, 25.5 uh, million of people that have smartphones, smart devices. That's a good stat. That is only in South Africa. But the only downside with this is that the majority of these devices are low-end devices, the people in the townships, 
people in, in, um, in rural communities, those people cannot afford your iPhone 14, right? So they get like a two gig device, they get like a, a low memory device, and they can just, that's what they use. Most of them are hand-me-downs, or they can actually just buy whatever cheap device they can find. I tell you, yesterday I lost my phone and I tried to buy the cheapest device. The cheapest I could get was 5,000 rand. And I can imagine that's a salary for someone for a month. I had to buy it, right? But these are actual challenges. But we said we have 25.5 million people with smartphones. This is a challenge. The other problem that you have in, in Africa and South Africa is literacy, right? The, let alone just computer literacy or smartphone literacy, we're talking about just literacy as a whole, which means that what does it mean for the product that we build? All our products are written in, are in English, right? We, that, that's how people have to interact. They have to interact in English. But we have a, a literacy problem in this country. Now, let's look at some practical solutions. This is a, a Libix approach to doing things. The first thing is we look at community, right? We've invested heavily on setting up communities on not only uh, the platforms like Facebook where people are, but we've set up, set up these communities on Telegram, we've set up these communities on, on just about on, 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 on um, um, forgetting the other platform, but we've set up communities on various platforms where we interact with people before we even build the solution to ask them to understand what these people, what, what the, our community want, right? In terms of products, in terms of services that actually meet them where they are. In terms of electricity, we are optimizing for offline first. This is a technical solution, right? That most developers don't do. You can build your application to be, to take the non-core features of your applications to be offline first. So someone can interact with the non-core features of your application without the need to be connected to the internet, right? They can do it offline and they can still interact with it. The other thing which is very important in terms of optimizing for low-end devices, we build platforms, if you look at the user experience of our platform, they serve us server-side rendered applications, which means that, like, the biggest problem here is React. If you look at any product that you build here, it's either like a JavaScript framework is built in React, which basically means that someone has to wait for the application to load before, right? It's a big bundle before it loads, before they can interact with it. For a load end device, people just, they give up, right? It crashes and give up. So, and they basically, people just give up. They don't use it. So our, our applications, they are rendered on the server side to make sure that it's op optimized for storage and also um, uh, optimized for network. The solutions that you're also looking at that we build into our solutions, uh, our application from the ground up, is reducing the app bundle, which basically means that the size of the app Oh, sorry, I'm battling, like there's people talking and I'm talking at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to be professional, but I'm battling. Don't worry, Mandra, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep an eye to see who's having some conversations, and then I'm going to walk over to them and interview them about what's so interesting. Shall yeah. we do that? Okay, let me, let me walk around the room. Hold on. Yes. Let me go and see who's having conversations in the building. Let's go and see what's so lekker interesting over here. You guys have been quiet for a very long time. It's so cool to see. Go for it, sir. All right. Thank you. Um, so I was saying about the app bundle. This is a technical solution again. So what you do is, in terms of the application itself, what you, you can do is what you call code splitting. It's fine. You can use a framework to build your application, but you can apply techniques such as code, spl code splitting where basically you load certain aspects of the application first. You know, what people interact with first, you load into memory, and then... You, you load it just in time. You don't load the entire internet. You know, download the entire internet on the phone. Yes, if you have like the high-end device, that's not a problem. But if you have a low-end device, that's a big problem, right? Because 
Then you have to wait, right? And that, that app, when it loads on your phone, it's like by that time it finished all your data, right? So this is what we do in terms of building applications um, at Libx. So to solve the problem of literacy, we make sure that our user interface is, is intuitive. Intuitive from the ground up. And that's why you hear people saying UX, UI. For us, UX is, UI is not just how it looks, it's how it works, right? It, how it works for someone with a low-end device, right? And then we build into our solution multiple languages. Maybe some of the solutions that you see right now don't fully capture all the languages that we have in the country. But that's what we build from the ground up. Our app is primed to support multiple languages. The other thing that we do very intentionally at Libex is educate. If you come to our marketplace and the people that list on our marketplace, sometimes we even list for them, right? We're not only are we teaching you about NFTs and how to, to interact with NFTs, we also show you how to basically list Right? Some of the artists that have listed on our marketplace, we've actually had to sit with them and have basically listed those NFTs on our marketplace. So we educate while we also show you how things are done. And the other important aspect, which is again, the biggest challenge with, with blockchain, like Ethereum in, in general, is that transaction fees. About a year ago, I tried to do a transaction on Ethereum. It cost me $50. I'm like, no, I'm too poor for this. So you can imagine someone else that's trying to, like someone that's with less means, trying to upload something. So for that reason, we've built our own chain, which is a proof of stake network. It's called the LBX chain. And then in that chain, it's a, basically it's a high speed chain and then low transaction fees, low cost to list or deploy smart contracts on this chain. So if you're interested um, in taking part in our pre-sale, you can talk to us in the booth uh, because we're going to have a pre-sale towards the end of the, of the month for the LBX token. Yeah, please visit our booth. And that's it. That's the end of the talk. That was a very difficult talk, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's hear it for Mandla. Magakula.